Good morning and welcome to Power for Today Prophetic Ministries with George Dello coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. We've been looking at the various names that God uses to reveal himself to us that are really very, very significant because they reveal not just his nature and his character, but he reveals uh, a lot of these we, we call redemptive names, reveal what Jesus Christ came to do to fulfill on our behalf so that we can uh, enjoy the blessings of God's kingdom. So the, uh, this morning, I want to look at Jehovah Rapha. He says, I am the Lord who heals you. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, <coughs> excuse me, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. That I am, when he says I am, that means he was, he is, and always will be. It, it never, God never changes. In fact, this one statement alone should, should settle any question about God's will to heal us because again he's the same yesterday today and forever and he declares himself to be i am the lord who heals you uh, i i don't know how much plainer it can be this is god this is god's nature and character he is a god of mercy and compassion and it is it, it is in that compassion that he heals us that he desires us to be whole both physically spiritually and mentally, he wants us to be sound, whole, and complete. And Jesus demonstrated this will of God when he came upon the earth. And uh, what did he do? He went about not just preaching the gospel, but healing the sick. And remember now, in Hebrews, he tells us that Jesus is the express image of God the Father. In other words, as Jesus told uh, uh, Timothy, you see me, you've seen the Father. In other words, Jesus expresses the very nature and will of God upon this earth. So for Jesus to go around and healing all who came to him is, is uh, another, uh, just a, another uh, fact that tells us God is a healer. It is his will to heal us, and he wants to heal us, amen, because he cares about us. Jesus came as the great physician to bring both spiritual and physical healing. He came to redeem us from the curse of a law, which is where sickness and disease come from. The, when, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, it resulted in a curse upon this earth. And out of that curse came sickness and disease and death and destruction and all the wickedness we see around the, the world today. It was all rooted in the sin of Adam and Eve. But guess what? Jesus came to restore what was lost. And uh, God declared himself to Israel that he was their healer. And Jesus comes and declares himself to be our great physician. He is our healer today. And he desires to heal us because he has redeemed us from the curse of law. Amen. Healing and deliverance were a major part of Christ's ministry on this earth. And uh, continues to be so because, again, uh, he's given his gifts to men to carry out that ministry. So, so again, you know, some people say, well, uh, that, that was only for the, the uh, time of the apostles. Well, that's not true either because, again, God doesn't change. And not only did Jesus heal, but he passed that gift to his church. He gave us the, uh, the, the power, the authority to bring healing in the church. So it's something that God has determined would continue throughout uh, uh, the ages upon this earth. Amen. Until one day when we're up in heaven, we won't need because there's no sickness, no disease in heaven. We won't need healing them. But uh, for now in this earth, in this earth, in this, this fallen uh, uh, earth that we live in, uh, we need healing. Amen. So Isaiah chapter 53, verse four and five, let me read this in the Amplified. He says, surely he, talking about Christ, has borne our griefs sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as with, lep as with, with leprosy. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and by the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. We are healed and made whole. And you notice the tense of this. We are healed when we put our faith in what Jesus Christ came to do as our healer, as our great physician. We put our faith in him. We are healed because of his stripes born on our behalf. In 1 Peter, 1 uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 24, notice how Peter puts it, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So here Peter is, after the fact, looking back to the cross and telling us we were healed. It was done. It was finished on the cross of Calvary. When he bore our sin, he also bore our sickness and disease so that by his stripes we were healed. And again, that leaves the onus on us by faith we take possession of the promise in what Jesus Christ did for us, just like our salvation. And uh, uh, we take hold of the promise of healing. And uh, uh, I'm not going to get into all the different facets of that, but you can uh, uh, look at some of my uh, uh, sermons online with Facebook and YouTube. Uh, in fact, I just did one recently on, uh, on healing. That goes into the some some of the deep parts of this, and you'll find that that word salvation in the New Testament means not just uh, salvation in a spiritual sense, but it's also used interchangeably with the word healing in the New Testament. There are several verses where he used that same word salvation for healing. That Jesus came to save us from sickness as well. Amen. So he's the God that forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. They go hand in hand, uh, both at the cross of Calvary. They also go hand in hand today. Amen. Because again, sin is, or, or sickness is rooted in sin. And so if you deal with a sin problem, you deal with a sickness problem as well. So Jesus, he forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. And by faith in Jehovah Rapha, he is our healer. And we were healed, and we are healed, and we will be healed in this life as we put our faith in Jesus Christ. So notice he says here, he says, you were healed. Life and health have been restored to us by Jesus Christ for all who believe. Who will believe. And uh, Jesus calls healing and deliverance the children's bread. In other words, they are part of the basic necessities that we receive as a children of God uh, through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. When we become the children of God, healing is the children's bread. It belongs to us. It is our right given us to given us to by God through Jesus Christ and worked by the Holy Spirit. It is one of the basic necessities that God has given to his children. Amen. He promised to meet all of our needs. Amen. He is our provider. And so he cares about our physical needs, whether it be food, clothing, shelter, but also our health and strength. And Jesus came to bring us that for all that will believe and put their trust in him. The next name I want to look at is Jehovah Sikinu, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, our righteousness. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse six, he says, in his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now, this is his name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Isn't that powerful? Because let me tell you something. We have no righteousness of our own. Amen. We are all born in sin and iniquity. We are already born defiled because of Adam and Eve sinning in the Garden of Eden when they sinned. The seed of Adam was defiled by that sin. It was corrupted, and that sin passes down to each and every one of us from the time of Adam and Eve, and uh, we all are born in sin. Amen. Isaiah tells us that our righteousness 
is nothing more than filthy rags. In other words, we, we don't have the ability in and of ourselves to, uh, 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 to, to uh, walk free from sin and glorify God. In fact, uh, uh, P, uh, Paul tells us in Romans, we all fall short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. We, we don't have a heart to seek God before Jesus Christ does a work inside of us. Amen. But through the atoning work of Jesus Christ, who comes as Jehovah Sikinu, the Lord, our righteousness, Jesus comes and gives us the gift of God's righteousness so that we can be reconciled back to God. We can have that right standing with God. We can be made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. It is only through the righteousness of God that we can be filled with the fullness of God by his indwelling Holy Spirit. God comes and changes us from the inside out. He removes our sin. He washes us from our sin and all the corruption and uncleanness because he is the Lord, our righteousness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We might become the righteousness of God in him. We partake of the very divine nature of God himself. And his nature, in Ephesians, he tells us, is a nature, in Ephesians 4, 24, that you put on the new man, put on the new man, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, which was created to God in true righteousness and holiness. In other words, when we partake of the nature of Christ through the redeeming work of Jesus that he accomplished for us through his blood shed on the cross of Calvary, we partake of his divine nature. And his divine nature is one of righteousness and holiness so that we again become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We put off the old man of sin and unrighteousness. We put on the new man, Jesus Christ. We put on his divine nature so that we can be the righteous children of God. Amen. Through the work of Christ, we partake of that divine nature so we can now live a new life uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, newness of life, using our life for the glory of God. You see, because your nature defines your fruit. And I'm not going to get in it right now, but I've got a sermon on there talking about the fruit and Jesus, how related uh, 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 our nature to trees and, and uh, uh, different ways so that we can understand uh, about this new nature we have in Christ Jesus. He gives us a nature of righteousness and your nature determines your fruit. So an apple tree bears apples. A banana plant bears bananas. Well, what does Isaiah uh, in chapter 61 tell us? We become what? The trees of righteousness. We become the trees of righteousness through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ, meaning what? That our fruit is righteous. Amen. Because of the work that Christ has done in us. When we partake of his divine nature, our nature is to do righteous things. Our nature is to obey and please God. Our nature is to walk uprightly and with God and uh, show forth his righteousness upon this earth that others might come to know him because our righteousness is our light that draws others to Jesus Christ because that's something this world does not have apart from Jesus Christ. So God gives us this special gift so that we can draw others unto him and his kingdom. So everything that God does is not because of our works or what we can do, but because of his righteousness, because of what he does. Again, it's all by grace and faith. Amen. We put our faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done for us. And he removes that old man of sin. He removes the filth and uncleanness. He washes us in his blood and he gives us his brand new nature he takes out the stony heart of flesh, gives us a brand new heart that is sensitive to the touch of God and gives us a brand new nature of righteousness because he is Jehovah Shekinu, the Lord, our righteousness. And it's his righteousness which gives us bold access to the throne of God's grace so that we can receive mercy and find grace in the time of need. In other words, because of his righteousness, we can boldly come before God 
for our needs, when we when we need help, when we 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 can come boldly to that throne and ask Him. And uh, you know, if you read the book of Esther, uh, when when uh, Mordecai told Esther she needed to do something, she needed to go to the king and help them out because uh, uh, they were going to kill all the Jews. And uh, she said, nobody can go before the king except he extend his scepter and give them permission or else they would be killed. Well, this is what God's done for us. He extends his scepter because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of his righteousness given to us. He extends his scepter toward us so that we can approach his throne of grace and find his mercy and grace in time of need that we can receive from him. Whatever it is, we can approach him and ask him boldly and with confidence as our Father, as our God, as our Lord, as our friend, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us to make us the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. His righteousness gives us access to all of the blessings of God that have been restored through Jesus Christ. Amen. From the time of the Garden of Eden, everything that Adam lost, Jesus brought back through his work on the cross of Calvary, his death, burial, and resurrection brings that restoration so that we can avail ourselves of all of these blessings that is given to us. And uh, this is one of the greatest ones right here, his righteousness, so that we can have an intimate, personal relationship with God himself by way of his Holy Spirit coming to dwell in this righteous temple. Amen. Again, this is George Dello. Power for Today Prophetic Ministries coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. You be blessed and a wonderful day in the Lord. And if you don't know him yet, get to know Jesus. Call upon his name and put on the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself so that you too can have this relationship with him. Amen. God bless you.